Welcome to the Multi-Taction Showcase Tutorial Series. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a simple finger menu. Before we jump into the editor, let's quickly review the four things we really need to set up to get our finger menu working. First of these is the opening animation. This is what we see when we touch and hold the display in order to launch the application menu system. The content set determines what sits behind the menu. The bubble type determines what these bubbles within the menu system look like. The connector type are these arms that link the bubbles together. Now, you can have multiple layers of menus, so when you launch the menu system as you see in this picture, the next bubble here could launch another menu system by itself, and so on. So you really can create a very deep set of content for someone to navigate through. OK, let's go over to the editor and start creating our finger menu. Now, as you'll recall from the other tutorials, we have to be in the structure. And I have my list of structures up here already. And the one we're working on is the tutorial app structure. And here's the background that we put on in tutorial one. So to create a finger menu, we need to add something to the menu layer right here. So if I click to add new widget, you'll see my option that comes up is a finger menu. And I just go ahead and add that. And straight away on the right hand side here, you can see all of the attributes that I need to set up in order to create this finger menu. Before we do anything else, though, it's always good practice to hit save. OK, let's have a look at these options. The first one here is the rotate menu towards hand. This is only relevant if you're in a table scenario. And what this means is that wherever you are around the table surface, if you touch and hold to launch the finger menu system, the content will orient itself towards you. In this instance, though, I'm simply using it for a video wall. So I can ignore this one. The menu idle timeout is how long the system menu will stay up on the screen before somebody does anything with it. I always like to set timeouts quite short because if you have a showcase application running in a public space, it can get quite littered quite quickly if lots of people are coming up, bringing up uh, videos or images or driving the menu system. So having this uh, menu timeouts and uh, asset timeouts set quite low is really good housekeeping because it keeps the application looking nice and clean and inviting for people to come up. The default is 10 seconds and for this example I'm happy to leave that like that. The opening animation and the content set we just covered are two of the critical things that we need to create. You'll notice that if I click on the content set, all of the existing content sets for the other applications are already in here, and I could use one of those. But for this tutorial, I want to create a new one. So we'll create a tutorial finger menu and save it. Now, I can edit the finger menu directly from here by clicking the edit button, or I could find the content set by clicking over here in the content set in the menu list. Before I do that though, I want to set an opening animation. And again, remember, this is what happens when you first touch the screen and hold it. The, uh, the animation that occurs before the menu system pops up is how you define that here. And again, because I want to show you how this works, we're going to create a fresh one for the tutorial. So I like the circular progress animation, and we're going to go ahead and add a new one of those. So tutorial, finger menu, animation. It's good practice to name the things that you're creating quite specifically, because you'll notice already, if I look here at the content set, for example, there are quite a few content sets down here, and the more applications I build where I want specific content sets, the more they'll be. So using a naming convention that allows you to look at the content set and know which application that belongs to, is quite a good habit to get into. So 
Now I've created my finger menu. I have my content set named. We haven't put anything in it yet. And we have the opening animation. So before we do anything else, let's edit this opening animation. And you can see up here in the help area, it tells you what that's going to look like. And the only thing I need to set is the color. Right now, it's set to white. You'll notice that when color is set anywhere in the showcase application, it's using this standard RGBA format. So you're probably familiar with this in other applications that you've used. The RGB sets the color. So for example, 255, 255 and 255 gives you a white color. If you were simply to set all of those to one, one and one, you'd get black. The attribute at the end determines the luminosity of that color. If I set it to zero, you won't actually see it at all. If I set it to one, you get the full color. Now, this isn't very representative when I'm using pure white, but just for the sake of experimentation, let's put 100 in there. So now you can see the color. If I set that to zero, you'll notice that the color goes away, basically. But if I want it, say, halfway, I can do 0.5. That's like a 50%. Equally, I can come a little bit further up, 0.75. And if I want the full color exactly as it's defined, then I hit a one. So for the sake of my tutorial here, I want to have it back to white. OK, so as ever, important to save. OK, let's go over to the application and see what we have so far. OK, here's the running application. Remember, this is the movie background that we put in in tutorial one. Now let's go ahead and touch and hold the screen and see what our opening animation looks like. And there we go. So the animation opens up and I get my menu bubble, which has absolutely nothing in it yet because we haven't defined the content set. OK, let's go back to the editor and start putting some content into this menu system. So back in the editor, I've selected content set from the menu list. And here's the list of all the content sets that are available. You can see that actually naming them helps quite a bit. So here's the tutorial finger menu that we're working on. Let's drop into that. And as you can see, there's nothing in it at the moment. OK, so let's head over to the media library. And you can see that in the showcase tutorial folder, I have a finger menu folder. Again, it's worth bearing in mind when you create several applications on a server like this, the naming conventions you use for the objects really does help you later on. You could have basic um, images, icons, assets, type folders, but I like to have specific folders underneath my applications. I think it's much easier to find the content that you want later on, particularly if you know which application a particular asset is in that you're looking for. So in my case, I've got showcase tutorial. I've created a folder called the finger menu. And I've got some images in here. So let me expand that. And here's the images that I've got defined to put on my finger menu. Now, I can click and select multiple. And the way I'm doing that is I'm doing a left mouse click on the first one, holding down the shift key and clicking on the third one. That selects all three images at the same time. Now I'm going to click and drag those over to the finger menu and drop them in. OK, that seems pretty easy. Let's hit save. Just close the media library and let's go take a look and see how that now has affected the finger menu in the application. OK, so here we are in the application. Let's touch and hold and here comes our menu. So right now it's really hard to tell what's behind those menu options. But if you were to touch one, it would open up the picture that's sitting behind it. And you'll notice that I can do all sorts of crazy things to that image. And we'll talk about the attributes that you can set on that later on. You'll also notice that the menu system's gone because it's on its 10 second timeout. But the menu system itself isn't very attractive right now. In fact, it's impossible to tell what's behind those options. And in order for us to do that, we need to go set the bubble type. So let's hop back to the editor. OK, so back into my content set list, I'm going to go ahead and select the tutorial finger menu. And you'll notice now when I look at the finger menu, 
I have a bubble type to set. There's nothing defined at the moment, so I have to create a new one depending on how I want that bubble to look. You'll notice though, if I go over and look at each of the individual images that we've put in, they also have a bubble type. Now it could be that you want to use multiple layered menus. We're doing a very simple one here at the moment. But instead of an image here, if I had a different type of menu that I wanted to launch, say a, like a level two menu, I might want to use a different bubble type because I've got different types of assets behind it. I'll show you an example of that in a moment. Right now, let's try and keep it really simple. So let's create a new bubble type. There are several we can choose from, but again, for the sake of the tutorial, let's go ahead and create a new one. So tutorial bubble, and I'm going to call it level one. You'll see why this is important later on, but for now, let's go ahead and do that. Okay and save of course. We've also got a connector type. Remember that's the arm that goes from the middle of the menu system to the end. I actually am quite happy with the one I've got now. We could change this if we wanted to and again on sub-level menu systems you might want to so that it's really clear that you're in a different part of the menu system. For now let's leave it as it is. And here's the close after idle. Remember, I like things to really tidy up after themselves so I'm going to go ahead and use one that we've used before which is timeout five, which five seconds make things go quickly. You'll notice that the further you go into this and the more applications you build, you'll find that you already have a lot of these things defined because you've built them in other applications and they're available here for you to use, which makes the whole process much quicker. Okay, now that we've done that, let's go ahead and edit this tutorial bubble level one. Okay. So here are all the attributes that I can set that determine how that bubble will look. So, for example, I can determine a specific image that I want to use. Now, this is important if you want to use an icon, for example, to drive something. I'm just going to let that default for now. This will tell me if I want to have a name on top of it. This will tell me the background color of the bubble. So if we go back and look at this example here. Inside the bubble area, there'll be a background color. I actually don't like having a background color because I like my icons and images to look the way that, that I choose them to be. So I set that to zero. If you remember, that essentially turns off the color that's there. The closed bubble color shows what it looks like when it's not being used. And then there's the edge color. Now the edge color, again, if you look at this, you have a ring around the outside. If you define an edge, this is what it looks like. For the moment, we'll leave that in. The bubble size determines literally how big it is. And if I change this, it will make the bubbles really big. And this may be appropriate depending on the type of application you're using. Again, I'm just gonna let this default. Same with the closed bubble size. Now, crop bubble image. What's gonna happen here is whatever image you use for the bubble is gonna go inside of that round circle that's set to the default size that you've put in. It will crop that picture to fit inside that bubble if you enable this. It could be that one of the things you wanna have happen is a logo that sits in the middle, but it stays the proper logo size and shape. Now, if you want to do that, you'd need to turn off this crop bubble image. And we'll have a play with that in a little bit. For right now, we're just going to leave it as it is. And also, you'd want to change the aspect ratio settings because you'd want to make sure that if you put your logo in, that it doesn't get skewed in any way. So you'd want to enable this. But again, for right now, we're just going to leave this all as it stands. So let's go ahead and save. So now that I've set that bubble type up, I can go ahead and turn that on for the other options as well, for the other menu options. So if I come down here and see my tutorial level one bubble, go ahead and save that, go to the meeting room, set this to my tutorial level one bubble, and finally for the third one. and save. Okay, let's go back to the application and see how that looks. So in the application, let's touch and hold and build the menu. And look, now it looks completely different. 
So the bubbles are individually named. You can actually see what they are because they're using a default image, which is the image that the uh, application can see. And if I touch on one of those menu options, it opens up the image. In fact, they all work perfectly. So that is how you create a basic finger menu. So let's take a minute to review exactly what we did. So at the start of creating the menu, we established our opening animation. That was the white dots that circle as you open it. We created a new content set for the finger menu. And as you remember, when we first opened it up, we just had white bubbles with nothing in them. And the way that we fixed that was we created a new bubble type. And the bubble type was set to pick up the image as the default background. We turned off the background color and we left the circle on the outside. So literally, they look just like these ones in the diagram over here. We decided to leave the connector type as default because that already had this nice white line going from the bubble out to the menu option. And when we touch the menu option, it launched the images directly. So this brings to an end the tutorial on how to create a simple finger menu. Thanks for watching.